so thank you so much arvin uh, i think we had a great understanding of your a little bit about your life and and also a lot of detailed questions that you answered uh, when it came to um, a lot of uh, you know a lot of difficult terms that people had i think it's time we get on to the more um, you know we'll open it up to the audience and we'll have just three questions for for you today um and let's uh, let's start maybe does anybody have questions go ahead please ask the question what is the difference between whole exome sequencing and whole genome so, is uh, what is the difference between whole exome sequencing and whole genome sequencing whole genome sequencing is nothing but uh, you know our genome is made up of you know uh, 3 gb like 3 uh, giga bases of the uh, nucleotides mm -hmm. whole genome sequence is nothing but reading entire whole 3gb data that means entire 46 chromosome end to end reading is called whole genome sequencing so you if you read a whole genome sequencing you generate a 3gb data per single sample if you are doing only one time coverage so that's called whole genome sequencing mm -hmm. whole exome sequencing is nothing but you remove all the un you know uh, uh, untranscribed regions of the genome and you remove intronic regions and you only concentrate exonic regions because they are the ones which make proteins that's called whole exome sequencing nowadays to diagnose one disease and to you know uh, keep a price in check doctors are prescribing whole exome sequencing because whole exome sequencing is clinically more relevant can compare to whole genome sequencing in the question of when you when you diagnose one disease 99% of the diseases are because of the problems and mutations in the exonic regions only that's why people go for whole exome sequence because it keeps the price check and as well as it reads exonic regions more thoroughly but if we all were able to do a whole genome sequencing for let's say 5000 rupees at some point in the future do you think that would be a better set of data for us to keep uh i you know for example right now we are offering a uh, whole genome whole exome sequencing mm -hmm. as well as whole genome sequencing you know we uh, came up with a pretty good you know whole exome sequencing uh, panel with us now whole exome sequencing panel in earlier it was around 80 mb panel mm -hmm. it was a pretty big panel right now the panel what we are having is around only 14 mb panel 80 mb panel also as very informative but we removed all the unwanted materials from that panel and made crisp for team panel to make the price down and give the quality data to the customers and that's the that's the whole exome sequencing if you do in future if 5000 whole genome sequencing comes the whole exome sequencing can be given at 1000 rupees which will be more helpful that will be a first tier and whole genome sequencing will be a second tier and i would say instead of doing whole genome sequencing add mitochondrial sequencing whole genome sequencing to the exome sequencing which makes more sense than whole genome sequencing okay. uh, so i i'm sure people have question about mitochondria but i think let me first uh, get any other question that uh... actually we have a more data sources as well so come here and this one We have a four bases, right? Right. Yes. So, but in transfer, transfer of protein, amino acid, we are getting only the spread. So, as I told, see four bases in the combination of three bases with sixty-four codons scores for twenty-two amino acids. Mm -hmm. Right. So, in order to make some combinations, if you only have three bases, you can't have a combination. You only have nine combinations. but you have four bases you have 64 combinations probabilistic probability is more and the uniqueness of the amino acids different amino acids are more that's the reason nature made it like that if but you have only two amino acids uh, you know and it's a evolutionary process for example atgc may adenine guanine cytosine were there from the beginning thymine was not there in the beginning rna is actually having uracil instead of thymine so in the evolutionary process uracil is replaced by thymine mm -hmm. But three bases are still there from the beginning, so 
the coding is uh, made by that three basis only. Nature chose in that way. So it's like the three things that PWC chooses. <laughs> yeah. Nature also chooses. Always the third machine is left over. Two is no. two less and four is two Four is two much. much. Yes. That's why nature chose three. I think <laughs> three. That's, that's what we will keep yes. it up. Any other questions? Yeah, so introns keep a check on you know our uh, replication process. The introns makes uh, the replication process smooth. If there's any replication error, the protein should not lead into a drastic change in the you know uh, uh, person's health. So that check will be taken care of by introns. Or uh, while the transcription is taken care, post trans post translation may introns will be spliced and exons are drawn properly so that the coding will be proper. Because uh, you should not read too far so that you know uh, you end up getting you know uh, an error in amino acid and get misplaced amino acid. This checkpoint will be taken care of by introns. So these are like your class monitors. So you have gene monitors. Yes, we have gene monitors. So we have many genes. Cancers and introns are not in control because they're not even regulated process and overproduction. Overproduction. Yes, that is one of the reasons. What is one of the reason? It might be actually we are not much. You know, we don't have much of understanding of the introns in this evolution. It might be a byproduct of. The, it might be the reason for cancer, or it might be a byproduct of cancer. So sometimes because of the cancer, you know, uh, introns might have formed in in between. So in genome patri, we do cover. We do have some markers that are present in the intronic regions as well. Yes, exactly. So that you know, uh, like it might be a small sequence with no sense in, in it, but if you add one nucleotide in between the intron, that entirely shifts the reading frame to one way square front or one way square back. That means AEG becomes AAG. Yeah, A will be left over. UG combines with something else. Methionine is, is a stop. A starting codon will be methionine. You have to start from methionine. If you incorporate one thing, it will be the entire read frame changes. So that's, that's the reason there are some spot, you know, hot spots in the introns also, which gives, which, which are responsible for you know, protein to not function. So that is important to find out. That's why we are genopathy has a lot of markers. These actually acts as a good markers to see that what kind of a protein uh, malfunction is there in the particular patient. Anybody else has any questions or? Can you ask one? Sure. Let's talk not about five years, just let's talk two days before. Yes. <laughs> uh, till two days before, also, uh, we, our genome pathy was costing almost more than double. Yes. We have reduced it to, you know, uh, half of it. And it is the duty of, you know, private sectors to make it available to all the people uh, because we believe that this is essential and this has, we have to believe in science. Somebody has to believe in science. We believe in the science. We want to take it forward. And we come forward with, you know, uh, uh, partly, uh, you know, cut down our, our uh, you know, profits and it's, we are making it available so that everybody can get these things. So more and more companies like this comes forward, then price will automatically come down. So with the new technology, the price new technology down. prices definitely will come down. Right. Earlier, thousand, earlier, every company's motto is to get the same, you know, uh, earlier it was thousand genome project, thousand, thousand dollars per genome. That was the so I, I think let me uh, maybe just to give a perspective to all of you. I think when when we started in uh, Osimum Bio in 2001, and the Human Genome Project was completed, it cost a few billion dollars. I think then it went to a point where I think it's too noise, but um, I think we, we got to a point where it became you know hundred thousand dollars or more when Steve Jobs wanted to do his um, when he was diagnosed with cancer. Yes, yes. 
that, I think at that point also, and that was not very long ago, that was that cost at that time was about more than a hundred thousand dollars. So I think what we have seen is that you know, from billions of dollars from multiple agencies coming to sequence one to getting it to like uh, 250,000, 100,000. And then we've come down to a point where today it is at thousand dollars, sometimes at, at 500, 600. I think it is kind of like the transistor where, you know, initially it was expensive. It comes to a point where then it becomes part of everything that, that you do around you. I think it's the same with genomics. I think we are getting to a point where it's going to become extremely cost effective. So any, any other question or we will... And this is made cost effective by the companies like us where more and more companies come forward, then it will be, price will be diluted. That's the only you know, secret of it. I think it's, it's, a, it's a matter of technology, it's a matter of um, volumes, volumes, and it's a matter of finding volumes, value especially for volumes. Values. So yes. I think also the difference between what we saw 10 years ago versus now is that we know a lot more. I think you know some questions like we had today, which was saying, you know, what is the point of having a, an intronic region intronic and things region. like that? I think if you take another five years later, we'll know even more than what we know to do. So I think that's the beauty of science. And I think that's the beauty of you know, the area that we are in. And I think it's, it is something that is so fundamental. It's something that we all are so, you know, it's what builds all of us that I think it's the fact that this technology exists and exists at an affordable price, I think makes it easier for people to be able to access to today. So and it should be targeted. Like, you know, uh, we have a small panel called Anko panel. Uh, earlier, uh, all the people, every clinician used to pinch whole exome sequence only for every cancer, but that was too costly and information is being taken from all the whole exons. But now, because of the small panels, we wanted, the clinician wanted information only from that particular regions, nothing else, and more information from that clinical region. So that will be made possible, a uh, lot more than That will be possible when you do the small panels, target things, and then generate more data, then if one mutation is there in a single cell, not only in all the cells, then also we can actually find out. Cancer is such thing only. You have 100 cells, but only one cell has that mutation. You want to capture that. If you don't capture that, if you do more times, read or if you read more times, then one cell will be captured. That's how, you know, small panels are powerful enough. We started with one panel, we will be doing more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So, so thank you again, uh, Arvind. This was the first. We had some technical issues. We had all of that, but I think it was a very informative session, and we hope that you know, we'll continue this these sessions. I think it allows uh, not just our team, but we are also actually uh, broadcasting it to uh, to all the audience, anyone who wants to know, so students, clinicians, and others. I think our are welcome to join in in these sessions. So I think as we once figure out all the technical issues, I think we'll get to a point where we'll be able to uh, make this much more seamless. So thank you once again. And thank, thank you, you uh, uh, all of you for all joining right. in and as well as people who are watching it on YouTube or, or Facebook. Thanks again and uh, signing off.